guys welcome back to my channel so today we're gonna do a story time about my abusive childhood if you are sensitive to topics about child abuse child trauma this is your chance to go ahead and click out this video if you would like to stay and get some insight about my situation and guidance on how to deal with child trauma and child abuse stay tuned all right so we're gonna start off by saying i am human okay i have issues everyone has issues just like everyone in this entire world like everyone's literally the same so by no means am i demonizing any of these people that i speak of in my videos now me being me i know i'm gonna ruffle a couple of feathers because still to this day there's people in my life that will not realize how much their actions affected others and that's okay some people live in denial some people will take the truth to their grave and that's okay that's okay i'm gonna live in my truth i'm gonna tell my truth and i pray that my truth can help someone out there that's my only intention I'm going to school to be a therapist one day and a counselor, and I want to motivate and help people, especially people that have been through these situations, people that have dealt with, you know, abusive, toxic, narcissistic family members. Hopefully I can be a beacon of light for those people by telling my story. All right, so I want to start off this story time by saying I did not realize that my family was as toxic as it was until I actually went and spent time with friends and people outside of my family and I saw how my friends reacted to their family and how they, you know, dealt with their family. And then I was like, okay, this is literally not what I have went through. And that's okay because everyone has different learning experiences and that doesn't mean that my experience is worse than yours or your experience is worse than mine or it's better. I feel like we all have to go through certain things in order to evolve and grow as human beings and I feel like my experience really helped me evolve and it really helped me realize that emotional maturity is so important. All right, so first and foremost, it's important that you guys realize that I was raised by my grandmother. My grandmother was old school, so I was basically taught old customs and old traditions. My mother was in and out of the picture, and my father unfortunately passed away when I was in a freshman in high school. And I suffered from depression, I suffered from low self-esteem, Due to the fact that my grandmother was very mentally and emotionally abusive. Now, my mom had her own vices. She suffered from drug addiction. And unfortunately, most of the time that she was pregnant with us, she was on drugs. So a lot of my siblings had withdrawals from that. A lot of my siblings dealt with their own, you know, issues. So it was hard for me to be able to communicate with them because we all had our own trauma. And it seemed like I grew up in a household to where everyone kind of turned a back to it. Like if I even brought up being abused, everyone would be like, what do you mean abused? Like everyone goes through this. Or I just felt like people just weren't sensitive. People weren't empathetic about it in my family, even down to my uncles and my cousins. It's like everyone was like so used to the abuse that it was normalized. And I was like, y'all, this is not normal. This is not normal. I think I started realizing my childhood wasn't normal when my mom used to wake me up, me and my little sister up at like one o'clock in the morning to literally drive 15 minutes to the next town over. And she would keep us in the car or sometimes she would bring us into the house and leave us with somebody while she was doing drugs like she literally would take us anywhere and she'd leave us anywhere she left us in the car so many times when it was cold and i had to like literally sit there and like cuddle my little sister and just pray she would finally finish what she was doing so we could, would go home or there's times when she would leave us with crackheads like 
in a crack house and she would be in the next room doing drugs. And of course, when you're dealing with narcissistic family members, they'll try to make it seem like they're the victim and they'll be in denial the whole time about their actions and how they caused you trauma. Like I remember so many times when I was like 18, 19, 20, I used to try to go to my mom and talk about these uncomfortable situations. And she would literally be in denial, guys. She'd be like, it never happened. I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, I never abused you. I spanked you. I never abused you. Okay, then why were we taken away and placed with our grandma by CPS? Like, they CPS literally took us and placed us with an abusive grandma, trying to get us away from an abusive mother because of the fact that she could not cope with her drug addiction. Most of our clothes came from thrift shops or the dollar store because most of the money that we were getting from our father through child support, most of the money that she was getting from child support was literally going back into drugs. She had a business and most of the money from her business went back into drugs. Anytime I had a job or I had, you know, a way of making money, my grandmother and mother would siphon it from me by making me feel guilty by making me feel you know like i did this for you i put food in your fucking stomach i put clothes on your back first of all those are the basic necessities that a human being needs to survive as a human mother you're required to make sure the child that you pushed out has those basic needs Y'all, I literally remember this one time. I was so depressed from being abused by my grandmother and my mother constantly that I tried to unalive myself. And I remember having seizures because I had taken some medication and my grandma was so worried. She came back there and she like was just freaking out, freaking out because she didn't know how to deal with the situation. And by the time they got me to the hospital and I got back home, all my clothes were literally on the fucking floor. Like I was living with my mom at the time because I was having problems with my grandma. And my mom got upset because I embarrassed her by trying to unalive myself. She kicked me out and threw my clothes on the ground outside my grandma's house and moved me back with my grandma. Okay, so if you've dealt with a narcissistic parent, raise your hand. Okay, so if you've dealt with one, you know that they're so, so invested into their image. Like anything that you do that makes their image look bad is literally a disgrace to them. It's literally a disgrace to them. Like, I can't tell you how many times like my mom would literally like, like put us together and make us look good for her image. But on the inside, like the inside of our home, it was literally World War II. You were literally hiding in the bathroom most of the time doing crack. And if you weren't doing crack, you literally would disappear for like a week. Like she'd be gone for a whole week, y'all. A week to two weeks, to maybe even a month. There's many times that I was left home by myself because my mom literally was out doing drugs. And when she would come home, she would have withdrawals and just be sleeping all day. And I had no time to sit there and talk to her. Okay, so then imagine going to your grandma and your grandma thinking it's okay because she did the same thing to your mom. Like a cycle of abuse, y'all. A cycle of narcissism. A cycle of denial. It was a constant cycle with my family. And I just refused because I was like, you know what? I'm not finna continue this curse. This is a generational curse. And it's being passed down from child to child to child and I just wasn't living for it. So I ended up like literally moving out of the house with my grandma and moving in with complete strangers. And these complete strangers treated me more like family than my own family treated me like family. Like my mom used to come over to like the, my step, I call them my adoptive parents. Um, she used to come over there and actually like have conversations with them to see how I was and like how I was doing. And I was doing way better with them than I ever did with my mom and my grandma. I think now as an adult, especially going to school for psychology, I've learned how to cope with these things better than I did back in the day. Like I'm not taking a knife to my arm 
or just doing outlandish things to get attention. Because most of the stuff that I did was for help. It was a cry for help. And people didn't realize it. When I wanted to unalive myself, it was really me saying, please help me. Please get me out of this chaotic family. And looking back now, I'm just so grateful for those experiences because it taught me how to be independent, be on my own, and how to help others with my trauma. Because a lot of people have dealt with shit way worse than I've dealt with, okay? I've dealt with some shit, but I've heard so many stories from so many different clients and also friends, and their situation and background was like crazy. I think the first step to healing would be realizing that your trauma is not you. Your parents' decisions and their actions does not determine your outcome. It does not determine your future. You can change that through being a better person, through going to counseling and getting the help that you need. Because a lot of us have let this weigh on our hearts for so long. We have held this pain in to the point where it has been detrimental to our mental health. And it has been destructive throughout our entire lives. And the more that we hone in and use this pain as our power, we're going to grow stronger, guys. We got to grow stronger. We got to believe in ourselves. We got to love ourselves. We got to set the boundaries we need in our life in order to grow and evolve and break these generational curses. We have to rise above this. Like my entire life, I was so fearful of judgment because I had been so harshly judged by the people that were closest to me. I was constantly put down and told that I would never amount to anything. And then the moment that I stepped into my power, I realized just how much I was holding myself back and how much I was allowing other people to hold me back for my dreams and my desires. When you take in everyone else's negative belief systems, you're hindering yourself from being able to evolve and grow and get to your full potential. You're continuing to chain yourself to a cycle that is not of you. Don't live in anyone else's purpose. Live in your purpose. Love yourself. Set boundaries. If people need to go, they need to go cut them out of your life. And it's okay because I've realized that I am my own family. And I can create my own family. And I still love my own family. And I don't hold grudges against them. I don't have any resentment against them. Regardless of what they might say, they might look at this video and be like, oh, she's just trying to do this to get back at us. No, I'm doing this because there's people out here that need this message. They need to realize their worth. There's somebody out here that has been through some of the same similar situations that I've been through and they need this encouragement. I don't do things with the evil intention of hurting others. I do stuff with the intention of helping people. And those are my intentions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Send me the likes, the love. If you've been through experiences like this, please put them in the comment section. I want to know. I'm sending you all love and positivity. And I'm praying for every single person that has viewed this video. Know that you're not alone. Know that you will always be supported by the universe. And know that you can always speak to me, you can speak to your friends, speak to the people that you trust the most because we love you and we want what's best for you. If you've been dealing with suicidal thoughts and things like that, I'm gonna put a number up here and you can go ahead and access that number and get the help you need. I hope you all have a blessed day. Bye.